Hello. We're here to talk now about how to write an engineering CV or resume. And I'd like to show you today some of the basic elements that would go into an engineering resume or CV. So let's take a look at that and see what we have on the screen. First of all, of course, you would have your name and your contact information. Contact information would include street address, telephone number, and email address. And it's important to distinguish between your home phone and your cell phone, the reason being that potential employers and recruiters and networkers will more likely call you on a cell phone because they have an idea that they can get in touch with you more easily. So after that heading part of the resume, if you look over here, you'll see the professional summary. Now that's a paragraph, three or four sentences, that really talk about what it is that you do in general. Not specifically what you've done at a company, but what you've done in general. You should also include in this any certifications that you have, such as Lean Six Sigma. You may be a green belt or a black belt, or you may be a certified quality engineer. Any of those industry certifications that are very important these days, this is where they would go is up in the summary. And then after you've written your summary, then you would start with your specific professional experience. So for example, right now we're looking at a person who is a manufacturing engineer. And the very first thing we would put is the most recent company where he or she worked and the city and state where that is. And then over to the right would be the years. We don't use the months in a resume, just the years. So say from 2004 to 2009, if the person had recently been laid off. And then again, the specific title, in this case, manufacturing engineer, it's very important to include the exact title that human resources would verify. That is the same title that would appear upon your business card if you had a business card from that company. Underneath that, we'd like to see some description of your responsibilities. We call that a responsibility statement in resume writing, which really provides the background and the context for the job. What is it that you did within that job or were required to do within your duties and responsibilities? And then underneath that, as you'll see in our sample here, is specific accomplishments that you have done in that job. So, for example, project manager for the 250,000 retooling upgrading of the automated packaging lines. Now, this tells the reader that you were in charge of retooling of a particular package line. The worth of it was 250,000. And if you could include some results in that, what happened as a result of you being in charge of that project, that is certainly to your advantage as well. So the idea is to be as clear as possible, again, the duties and the responsibilities of the job, and then how you performed against those duties. This is what we call a chronological resume, so your most recent job would be first, and then going backwards in time to other jobs that you had, obviously, prior to that. Now, in our example here, this person was a manufacturing engineer manager at a different company, so we have the company and the town and the state and then the years when he worked there. Now he had two different titles in this particular job, so you'll see next to manufacturing engineering manager, there is a year right next to it. 